Hello ladies and gentlemen, this is Blue Maxima, and I'm here checking out Three Fourths Home. This is a little strange, honestly, but we'll just give it a look anyway. So, there's not much to look at while we're out here, but you can change your control scheme. However, the control scheme that's on by default uses a bloody rear touchpad thing, which is kind of... Annoying, to be perfectly honest with you, so I swapped that out immediately. However, the buttons swap it so that you are required to press the R button to drive and walk. Not that big of a deal, except you have to hold that button down constantly for like the 40 minutes it takes to beat this game. So, it, your finger will get mighty sore. We've also got more that we can go and have a look at. Also, why is it called keys? Like, why can't they call it buttons or controls or something a little less ridiculous? And you can come here and have a look at the music in the game, which you can actually swap while you're in-game, but we'll get to that. And you can also read the stories written by one of the characters, although I don't really see a point to ha being able to read them outside of the actual game. This isn't even really a game, if you want me to be perfectly honest with you. It's just... Alright, well, I might as well actually go, go and play the game now. I probably won't play through all of it because the game is fairly long-winded and I'm not going to spend 40 minutes playing the game because it'll pretty much just show what the game is in its entirety to the point where you probably don't have to go and actually buy it. The game is currently 5 bucks and also notably, despite the game being relatively minimalistic, it's almost 600 meg. Which I don't really understand. Like, it's a really nice little, like, graphical display, but it has this game take up 600 megabytes worth of space. I have no idea, but anyway. We're going to start from the top. And you can choose the main game or the epilogue, but to be honest with you, you can play them in either order because I played through both of them in the space of about 40-50 minutes and it didn't really make much sense either way. So we'll just go to the main game because why not? She a guitar on the road. Yeah, I just read things weirdly, but anyway. I don't know why... I just... I don't know why they felt the need to scroll the text in from the top like that. Like, I get some of this is meant to be symbolic, but I don't know what exactly. I was never one for symbolism, but... This game's symbolism is too symbolic for my symbolic... Symbolic... Synthesis. But anyway, guitar pick, plane going over. That's not actually the game, there's a plane going over my house. But yeah, fine. So we're in Nebraska, apparently. That's like Tornado Alley or something for you Americans, isn't it? I wouldn't know. Also, there's a house floating in the sky there. Except there's now it's not, because this game's weird. But anyway. We hold the R button. We wait for the R button to actually do something, but anyway. So yeah, now we drive. And while we're driving, the dialogue starts. And you press X to select an option, and you press square to advance from the NPC text to pick a choice. So, the choices... As far as I'm aware, the choices don't really do that much, honestly. I mean, they do... They do change what the game says, obviously, but I don't think there are any massive story changes that can happen over the course of the game, because it just doesn't seem like it, honestly. Like, I've played through it once. It's just, it doesn't really seem to make that much of a difference. And before you ask, yes, this is basically all the gameplay. Like, if I let go of the R button, time stops. And I literally can't do anything, so I have to I have to dr hold the drive button in order to actually do something. So I have to either keep my finger on the rear touchpad or hold the R button, depending on my control scheme, for 30-something minutes. It's... It just doesn't seem like the choices really do anything. It's just... The choices are all there are, but... The game's only 40 minutes long, so there's not that much room for...
there's not that much room for character development considering how short the game is. I mean, the game has discussions about things like mental illness and phantom pain for some bloody reason. And family relationships, but I feel like I'm watching an episode of a subpar TV show. Like a soap opera, but... I just, I... I don't really see the point, honestly. Because there's no development, we don't get to really know these characters, at least not much. The epilogue helps a little, but the epilogue doesn't have two of the characters in it. So you just spend... a lot of time just reading about these family problems, but... nothing's really done to... Resolve them? It's just like, you're given an offer of going home and then talking it out with the family, but you never make it home, at least in the case of the story, because, spoiler alert, a tornado comes in. But I don't actually know what happens after the tornado, because the game doesn't tell you. I really don't understand what the... I just don't understand the point, I think is what I'm trying to say. Like... As I said before, there's really no character development. You don't really get to know these characters, and the choices don't really mean that much, so... I feel like I'm just reading a book. A somewhat verbose book, but a book nonetheless. To the point where... There's a point later on where your younger brother shows up, and he starts offering to read you a story. And I'm going to cut it out before we get to that point, because that point embarrasses me to no end, and you would understand why if you knew my full name. But... At the same time... He tells you a story, and the story is a hundred times more interesting than the family conflicts that are going on here. I just, I don't even know. It's just... I just... yeah. It's just... I guess it's just what... yeah, as I said before, it just feels like watch, I'm watching an episode of, like, one of those soap operas. But... I... I just, I just I don't see the point. I really don't. And this is literally all you do for... 30 to 40 minutes. You just sit and listen... and not, not so much listen, as just talk... to these characters. Yep, there it is. You just talk to them, and you try and take in the atmosphere. I was thinking there might be something in, like, the background there they might have to stop to look at or something, but no, it was just... There are a couple of landmarks here and there, but I was expecting I'd have to, like, slow down or get out or something, but no, it's just... It's an interactive novel that makes you hold R the entire time. It's just... This doesn't feel like it should be a game, honestly. It's like you could print this exact same thing in a choose-your-own-adventure book. I will admit, I do like the yard style, and I do like the audio design. Let's turn on some of the music, because why not? But the audio design with the rain constantly falling, and the use of the... And the use of the art here, you know, to convey a sense of location is actually kind of neat, but... In the end, it's a lot of noise signifying nothing. It's just... Nothing's really done with this concept of driving along a road while you're listening to these problems, like there's nothing you can run into, it's literally just talking about family problems for 40 minutes. It doesn't even feel like a game, honestly. You can't fail, except if you choose to, like, just stop. But there's absolutely zero point to that, so... I just, I don't know. I honestly don't know. It's... I just, I honestly fail to see the point of this entire game. I really do. You could make this as one of those, um... Choice of games. Games. Like, don't get me wrong. 
I'm a pretty big fan of adventure games. I'm a pretty big fan of choosing your own adventure. I used to have a ton of the books. And I'm a pretty big fan of text adventures. It's just... I don't see the point of this. Like, there's a bunch of, like, clever art and music design here that isn't really used to convey the plot anywhere near effectively. It's just... I, I just... I really don't know why they went to the effort of having all this... All of this really well-designed graphical stuff. Like, I know it's simple parallax scrolling, but it's effective. And I get the... I really do get the nice idea then that... You're just... You're driving down a road that's covered with corn and trees in the background and... Different landmarks and... All of that. It's not... It's not bad, not by any means, I just, I don't really see the point of it in this game in particular. I imagine this art team would make an absolutely fantastic version of the Oregon Trail, but... Yeah. I don't know what else to say about it. It's just strange. Very strange. I'm just ping square and X. I guess there might be something, like other things. That you can do, like, you eventually get to... There are... There is something major you can do in the epilogue that'll change the ending to it. At least I'm pretty sure there is. But it's just... Again, I just don't see the point. I just... I really don't. I just... I honestly just spent like 40-something minutes listening to this fictional family talk about their fictional problems and I'm not really sure if I took anything out of it because I'm a 22-year-old guy just... making YouTube videos. It's... strange. Very strange, but... How long have I been doing this for? I need to alt tab. I'm missing my audio cue. 13 minutes! 13 minutes of just watching the corn roll by. This is really just all you do. And I'm honestly pretty much sick of it. It's just... I don't really see the point of this game at all, honestly. There's just nothing to it. And my, my finger's starting to get tired, considering I just played like 40-50 minutes of this earlier. It's still... Still bloody annoying. I just, I wouldn't recommend it just because I don't see the point of it. I really don't. It'd be better as a book. It'd be better as anything other than a video game where the majority of the video game is hold R. Like, I don't even think I need to just... Do I even need to press a button during these parts? Apparently I do. But yeah, so if we slow down and press circle, we can access the menu, and the menu will let us save and continue, which I mean, I can, I can understand why, despite the fact that the game's 40 minutes long, the fact that they still need to include a save function really shows something. I don't know what it shows, but it shows something. It's just, I don't know, there's no point to it. There's literally no point to it. You just listen to a family talk, well not complain, but talk about their problems for like an hour, and then that's it. I don't know if it's meant to be, like, actual sunlight, where it's meant to be, um... Enc encouraging a specific type of person, but... I am not that particular kind of person, apparently. Funnily enough, the guy who wrote actual sunlight's in the credits for this version, or at least I think he is. 
Uh, yeah, Will O'Neill. He's the guy who wrote Actual Sunlight. Uh, but yeah, I don't, I don't know, honestly. I just, I don't... Maybe I would feel better about it if I related more to it. Despite the fact that little kids basically cloned me when I was 10 years old. That was fucking annoying. But, I just, I don't relate to it, so I, don't, I can't really take anything away from it. So, yeah. I can't recommend it on that purpose. Maybe someone else will get something out of it, but me, I just, I don't see the point. I don't see the point of this even being a game. It could just, it could just as, as easily be a novel. Or a short story or anything, like... Anything other than a game where you basically just hold down the R button for 40-50 minutes. I don't want to run out my buttons that fast, guys. This has been Blue Maxima, and I'll see you all next time.